Able to On Air major sponsorship was given by Green Mountain Support Services, empowering neighbors with disabilities to be home in the community. Also sponsorship was given by Washington County Mental Health Services, where hope and support come together, and Champlain Community Services of Vermont. Sign, hold the hope to sign up, please. Yeah, I know. Sign. Is this oh, Rose's first Medicaid march, or was she here for the last one? She was not, yeah. no. Yeah. Hey, my friend. How are you? Good, how are you doing? Good, Good to see sir. you. Good, sir. Yep. What's that sign um, say? Hey, Donna. Hi, how are you? Good. Um, can you hold one of those up? You got your hair cut. Yeah. Yeah. I barely recognized you. Someone's driving this yeah. today? Are you sure? Sorry. No, you're okay. That one's pretty small. You can't hold it in there. You don't want to get your hand dry. I know. That's. I think I keep getting a free You're putting of that. wheels on this, correct? No, no. This is just going to be a, a little elevator for people to stand up on. How's that? Okay. Yeah. Stage? Yeah. Makeshift stage. Yeah, makeshift stage. Exactly. Perfect. Okay, should we try it out? Yeah. My grass roots over here. Hey. You feel safe, Britta. I feel safe. You feel powerful. You feel tall. I feel <laughs> tall. <laughs> Everyone gets a turn. <laughs> you, guys come, you guys come get a stage? Well, you know, we're grassroots. We don't waste Testing. money on stages. You think everyone's going to be able to hear us? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Woo-hoo. Now we don't have a bucket. You're not saying anything? They said the sign was off. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I only take them when I need to take them. <laughs> <laughs> you know what they did, yeah, did, did to me when late. they took me to Toronto? They gave me uh, nitroglycerin and then they had a wave of wild and then they gave me an aspirin on top of that. Yeah, 
Abel, Luna, A, B, E, L, L, U, N, A. Okay, um, and what organization do you represent and why are you here today? Uh, I'm with Migrant Justice, uh, which is an organization that fights for the human rights of migrant farm workers uh, in the dairy farms in Vermont. Uh, and we're basically here today to support the Medicaid. Um, uh, and it's really important that everybody has the right and the access to, to medical care, medical, uh, you know, medical support. Uh, as migrant farm workers, basically, we're not covered under under anything, pretty much, and we're sort of exposed to to that reality. And What's, uh, in your opinion, why do you think the main reason is uh, that migrant farm workers aren't covered uh, for medical? Well, it's uh, due to you know discrimination, basically laws that go back into the 1930s, and you know we were we're excluded basically from the right, every single right, right to organize, right to you know access to healthcare. You know, but these are the people that are sort of milking cows and sustaining the dairy industry and the famous brands of Vermont. Uh, you know, so um, you know, it's it's insane that you know, or you know, that in 2019, you know, migrant farm workers are not included basically under anything. And if there's one thing that you could tell um, Donald Trump or our, or our current administration about covering uh, people. Migrant farm workers, or people with special needs, or low uh, medical care. What's one thing you can tell the administration? Um, that um, you know, we are. It's really important. Everybody, you know, um, has the right to medical care, the, the right to medical uh, support and attention, and 
Uh, healthcare is a human right, uh, and everybody deserves that, uh, regardless of where you are, who you are, you know, what color you are. Um, you know, health is a universal thing, and we all need it. So, um, you know. Oh, it's hard. I'll, can I read it out loud? Would you like? What if, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's get to the light. Do you want it brighter or less bright? Yeah. It's just too fuzzy. Too fuzzy. Yeah. Quickly. Would you like it read quickly? Yeah, sure. All right. The, the, these are the countries. Uh, uh, if you can say your name. Michel Cadet. Spell that. M I C H E L K A B as in Bravo A Y. Salut, Michel. Salut. Okay. Uh, go ahead. Here are countries with universal health care. Algeria, Argentina, Australia, Austria, Bahrain, Belgium, Bhutan, Botswana, Brazil, Brunei, Burkina Faso, Canada, Chile, Colombia, Costa Rica, Croatia, Cuba, Cyprus, Czech Republic, Denmark, Egypt, England, Finland, France, Georgia, Germany, Ghana, Greece, Guernsey or Jersey, Hong Kong, Iceland, India, Ireland, Isle of Man, Israel, Italy, Japan, Kuwait, Luxembourg, Macau, Maldives, Mauritius, Mexico, Morocco, Netherlands, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Norway, People's Republic of China, Peru, Portugal, Romania, Russia, Rwanda, Scotland, Serbia, Seychelles, Singapore, Slovenia, South Africa, South Korea, Spain, Sri Lanka, Sweden, Switzerland, Taiwan, Thailand, the Bahamas, Trinidad and Tobago, Tunisia, United Arab Emirates and Wales, but not the United States of America. And why do you think that is? And you want an analysis? You want an analysis of the corruption of our democratic system through Citizens United and the concerted efforts of profit-making organizations to violate human rights for the profit of a tiny minority that is increasingly owning the majority of resources in this country, a, ma a minority, a plutocracy that pays representatives to violate the human rights of citizens, to break laws for the profit at the expense of workers and ordinary people. This is a state of victimization, not a democracy. State your name and spell it, please. Hi, I'm Diane Richardson, D-I-A-N-N-E. Richardson. I think you know how to spell that. R I C A. H A R D S O N. Okay. Um, and, and tell me why you're here today. So I'm here because I feel that um, not being insured is a life threatening situation. In 1996, I. Uh, had, I was 41 years old and I hadn't been insured since I was a child. Um, and I. You're not insured now? I wasn't insured. And um, I uh, learned about VHAP and I signed up and I got VHAP. And I decided that since I had insurance, I wanted to have my first ever uh, full, full physical. So I found a doctor. Excuse me, I'm in the middle of an interview. So I found a doctor, and I had this, you know, she was interviewing me and um, asking me all these questions. and. It was determined by her that I should. He's taking pictures. Keep on, go. Um, it was determined that I should, or she said that I should have a colonoscopy because my mother had died of colon cancer. Uh, my sister had breast cancer at that time, and I was at a high risk of getting it. So, uh, so. Um, and because of some problems that I was having, she wanted me to have the test. So she referred me for a colonoscopy, but she, sa uh, she said, um, if your insurance doesn't pay for it, I'd recommend that you save up for it. Well, I knew there was no way that I could save up for it because 
colonoscopies back then were over a thousand dollars. Interviewing people. Just don't walk in the. She had figured that out. So. So I. Uh, I called my insurance company and they said that it would be covered. And so I scheduled the colonoscopy, and I went and I found out I did have colon cancer. Um, they were really astonished that I had it because I was only 41. But now I've heard of, of teenagers getting colon cancer too. So it's not that uncommon at an early age anymore. Um, so I. Uh, I know that I wouldn't have had the test if I hadn't had insurance, and I probably it probably wouldn't have been discovered until it was out of control. So I'm really grateful that I was insured, and that I'm still insured, and I've made sure that I've been insured for the rest of this time, because I feel that, like I said before, um, being uninsured is life-threatening. So I want everyone to have... Uh, the long and short of it. The reason for this today... I want everyone to have <coughs> health care. And I feel like single-payer health care is the way to go. And that's the only way to ensure that everyone can have it. Thank you. So... Okay, state your name and spell it, please. So my name is Earl Cooperkamp, E-A-R-L-K-O-O-P-E-R-K-A-M-P. -E I'm the pastor of the Church of the Good Shepherd in Barrie, and happy to be here at the Medicaid March uh, here in Barrie today because, as the sign says over there, health care is a human right. And I know the Worker Center has been doing uh, uh, a good campaign on Medicaid for a number of years now, working on health care for a number of years. I was up at the Medicaid March uh, last summer up at St. Johnsbury, and it was a really good thing to see so many people coming out, and really, really glad to see so many people coming out in my own community of Barrie. So I think health care is a human right is the message we got to get through today. So, uh, for people with special needs uh, and you know, people in general, especially around this nation, what's one message that you can talk about real quick about the importance? good health care and not having it or not being insured? Well, the, the, the importance of it is that we, everybody's got needs, and we all even have special needs as well, but some of us have a little more needs than others, and so we all need to learn to stand together, to support each other through this, and that's what a march like today does. And I think uh, when we do that, we can make sure that nobody's left behind, that everybody's moving forward, living their life to the fullest potential, and that's what's so important about having access to good, quality health care, affordable health care, and we know we can do that in this country because some people got a lot more than they need, but if we uh, begin to share and make sure, come together as a community, come together as a country, we can make sure that everybody is going to have everything that they need to live a full life. Uh, my name is Tevye, T E V Y E, Kelman, K E L M A N. And your, and your title, please? I'm just, hey, I'm just me. I'm a member of the Washington County Organizing Committee, uh, Washington County Organizing Committee of the Workers Center. Okay. 
Yep. Explain to me real quick what the what the Worker Center does and uh, why we're here today. Uh, so the Worker Center is a is an organization of um, poor and working people who are coming together to fight for our rights and to organize. Um, today we're here because we want to protect uh, Medicaid against cuts that have been coming uh, from the federal government and state government and we also want to lift up people on Medicaid because we know that um, we're the most vulnerable people in the healthcare crisis. But we're also trying to bring together everybody, whether or not you're on Medicaid, whether you uh, are on Medicare, whether you are uninsured, whether you're buying private insurance, whether you get it through work, um, we believe it's a, a human right, and so that's why we're out here today, is, is, to, is to call for uh, the people of Barrie and the people of Vermont to get together and get what's ours, right, which is um, a universal publicly financed healthcare system. Okay. All right. We have, if you could also come on up. Corralling the cats. All right, everybody. We need the folks in our Washington County crew to come on up and grab this big banner. You're going to be right at the front of our march. All right. Sorry. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Sorry. No, you're all set, man. And everyone else who can hear me, y'all are going to start coming in and filtering in behind this big banner. Everyone else that's here, that's joining our march today, you're gonna to be lining up right here in the parking lot. We're getting in formation, ready to take the street. I got plenty of extra cord over here. Okay, that's okay. okay. All right, everyone, if you're over at the tables or in the park, in the trees, come on in to the middle. Come on and get your son for the day. Get lined up here behind our Washington County crew. All right, if you have a wheelchair or a walker, or some kind of assistive device, and you're walking with us, you are setting the pace today, all right? We're walking behind you, and you're gonna be right up here at the front with us. Thank you for coming out, that's so awesome. So anyone with a wheelchair, a walker, or small children, or a stroller, or a cane, you name it, you're going to be right at the front. We want you to set the pace so that we don't leave anybody behind. All right, everyone's getting lined up. Um, introduce yourself to your neighbor if you don't know them yet. Hi, I'm Amy. My name's Eliza. I'm going to lay out a few logistics for us today, let you know what's going on. Uh, if you don't have one and you want one, Grab a sign, grab a banner, grab a hold of anything that you want to be carrying downtown today. Get ready to get yourself loud and be heard. We're going to be downtown in Barrie today. We want everyone to hear us. So, uh, a, few, a few words today just about logistics. We have a permit to be here today, so don't be worried about the cars. Um, we are we are all above board with all of that, so we're we're totally safe. Um, we're gonna in a minute we're gonna be heading down here on Seminary. We're gonna come out, take a left here on Seminary Street, and we're gonna go down to the stop sign to Main Street, take a left, and go down Main Street to City Hall Park where we're going to wind up with a rally and some delicious food and a whole lot of partying. Um, so we're, we're marching today because health care is a human right. Health care is a human right. And we don't want, we want everyone to know that we're not invisible and that the people who've been kicked around the longest are here to say no more.
Uh, we got a few other logistics people with armbands today. That if you if you have some kind of accident or emergency or anything going on, people with armbands, can you raise your hands and let people know you're here? There we go. Take a look around. So if anybody needs uh, some medical assistance, please look out for those folks. Marshals, we have a crew of awesome marshals here today who are in yellow vests, and they're going to be helping lead this march down the street. They're going to keep us all hemmed in, let us know where we're going. Song leaders and chant leaders are here with us today. They're over here. We've got Avery and a whole crew of everybody. Don't leave them alone. Don't let them be. Don't leave them hanging. Make some noise with the song leaders, okay? We have bathrooms inside. If anyone needs to, to run in real quick, bathrooms are here. We're also going to have bathrooms down at the other end at the church of the Good Shepherd. All right, we're going to make sure that we let the people in front set the pace, and we're going to stay somewhat spread out, right, so that we can see each other and we can be seen. So don't crowd up on each other. Try and, try and keep a nice pace, and it's going to be... It's going to be leisurely. We're going to dance in the street, all right? Yeah. All right, now I'm going to lead us in a chant and kick it off and send it over to Carl. I'm going to say, healthcare is a? Human right. 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 All right, thank you so much. Here's Pastor Carl, uh, who is going to give us a little welcome. Welcome, everyone, to Barry. I've had the privilege of being the pastor here at the Presbyterian Church for a number of years. And one of the great joys that we have here is that we get to host the Vermont Workers Center um, and all the good work that they do right here in Barry, which is home to a lot of community organizing and solidarity work over many, many years. So it's a joy to have you all here. Uh, as we're out here on this sunny, warm day, I've been reminded of uh, a couple of friends of mine through Vermont Interfaith Action that I'm a part of. We partner with Vermont Workers Center. A couple VIA folks were traveling in the sunny, warm African country of Morocco. And while they were uh, traveling around Morocco, they learned about a lot of the challenges that folks face in Morocco, things like uh, illiteracy, things like poverty, things that keep people down for too long. And they had a guide whose name was Hamad, who was leading them around Morocco. And as they were face-to-face uh, -face with a lot of the poverty in that community, they were asked, uh, they asked Hamad, what do people do when they need health care? And you know what Hamad said in this developing country? He said that in Morocco, we provide health care for every single citizen of our country. And so they uh, asked him, well, how do you do it? And they said, well, we make it happen because our holy book tells us that we must do it. So then Hamad asked my friends, uh, Mary Beth and Tom, if there was universal health care in this country, the United States of America, the wealthiest country in the world. And you know what they answered, right? Is there universal health care? No. Which is a problem. And it's not only a problem, it's a shame. And it's not only a shame, it is an immoral reality of the country in which we live. Because as Eliza just reminded us and taught us to chant, health care is a human right. Health care is a human right. Health care is a human right. Serendipitously, I've just been handed a list of some 72 countries around the world that have universal health care. Let me see if the United States is on it. I don't see it anywhere on the list of 72. It's a shame. So, as Martin Luther King reminded us, the uh, moral arc of the universe is long, but it bends toward justice. And the work for universal health care, although it might be long, it bends toward justice and truth and what is right. So I urge you and remind you to continue to work for it and hope for it and believe it, for it will happen. Healthcare is a human right. Healthcare is a human right. I'm going to hand it over to the solidarity singers, uh, Heidi and Avery, who can get us rocking.
This is a call and response. All together in this fight, all together in this fight, health care is a human right. Health care is a, yeah. All together in this fight, health care is a human right. Health care is a human right. And another one goes, no hurdles, no cuts, no if, ands, or buts. Try it. No hurdles, no cuts. No if, ands, or buts, but with the melody it goes like this. No hurdles, no cuts, no if, ands, or buts. No hurdles, no cuts, no if, ands, or buts. No hurdles, no cuts, no if, ands, or buts. No 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 oh yeah, that sounds good. One more uh, calm response one. This one speaks to you know, why we're marching. You know, we, one day there'll be a day we won't have to march, but as long as there's injustice, as long as we're still fighting for health care, we're gonna march. So this one's calm response. I'll sing it and you can sing it after me. The day's gonna come when I won't march no more. The day's gonna come when I won't march no more. Then it's the same word but different melody. The day's gonna come when I won't march no more. The day's gonna come when I won't march no more. But while my sibling ain't equal and the people aren't free. But while my sibling ain't equal and the people are free. Hand in hand with my family we will fill these streets. Hand in hand with my family we will fill these streets. The day's gonna come when I won't march no more. The day's gonna come when I won't march no more. The day's gonna come when I won't march no more. The day's gonna come when I won't march no more. But while my sibling ain't equal and the people are free. But while my sibling ain't equal and the people are free. Hand in hand with my family we will fill these streets. Hand in hand with my family we will fill these streets. Yeah, I'm good. All right, we're gonna get going.
I was marching around this very park, the Berry teachers went on strike around health care costs. And guess what? Things have gotten worse. Teachers are getting asked to pay more. A lot of uh, servants, civil servants are getting asked to pay more. Taxpayers have to pay more. And I'm still fighting this fight because my dad went into a hospital and he did not leave. He died a year ago. And my siblings and I got a $16,000 bill. He had Medicare. He had supplemental insurance. And I got a $16,000 bill for a man that's dead. Whoa, that's not right. All right. So, who's in? We're in. Who's in? I can't, okay. Um, so, I just want to let you know that we have some folks that are going to speak. No, no, you don't have to bring them. And I'm going to invite them to come up. Yeah. So let's move the banner, guys. We have some folks that are going to share stories. And um, I appreciate you giving us uh, a little bit of time and attention for this. And we uh, appreciate their bravery. time to get a doctor and my grandma has to pay for her meds and my mom has to pay for her insulin out of her pocket that's why I'm here marching for Medicaid yeah. hi I'm Maurice of Alliance I'm a single mother of two I'm an LNA um, I face many struggles as a single mom as far as budgeting and sometimes Medicare and Medicaid doesn't help with all the expenses so um, Sometimes I can't configure it in my budget with being a single mother of two. So today, my children and I are marching today. And just yeah. yeah. help to like health care is a human right. Thank you. Hello, everybody. How are you doing today? My name is Lori Demers, and I'm a homeless person. I stay at the Good Samaritan, which is awesome. Um, I think it's very essential for people like me to have Medicare or Medicaid. Now, I moved to Vermont from Arizona in November, and I love the people here. They're awesome. So much nicer than Arizona. Now, thank you. Now, it took me two months when I got here to get on Medicaid. It was very rough for me. I have a heart condition. I was born with a heart condition. Unfortunately, I didn't find out until I turned 48 years old. Now, I have a defibrillator, which they stuck in my chest, so I have to be monitored every three months. Took me a couple months to get Medicare, so that was kind of, you know, kind of airy. Now, without my Medicaid, I would not be able to have my defibrillator checked every three months. And that is the reason why I fight for Medicaid. marching for Medicaid because working as a healthcare associate here in Barrie um, for a resource desperately trying to main a access, maintain access for reproductive health care, I had to have daily conversations with patients about what it would cost and I had to witness them piecing that apart and picking apart what they would take as a result of that. As an EMT, I have pleaded with patients in potentially life-threatening emergencies to agree to seek care for the same reason. I have loved ones that what I would give my life for, but there is absolutely nothing I can do to get their insurance companies to cover many necessary expenses like mental health resources when those resources aren't considered profitable enough and therefore are not prioritized, not funded, and as a result, not available. You and I are walking dollar signs to the people that profit off of our current system. And I, for one, refuse to accept that politicians and billionaires have the right to tell me that my life and the lives of the people that I love aren't worth the risk to their profits. All of these 
these reasons and so many more are why I am marching for Medicaid. How y'all doing today? All right. My name is Donna. I'm from the Northeast Kingdom. My mother was on Medicaid. She was a bad diabetic, very bad diabetic. Now I have diabetes. It's not quite as bad as hers, but I wouldn't be able to afford my anti-diabetic medication or anything else if it wasn't for Medicaid. So that's why I'm marching for Medicaid and to make sure people that really need it get it and it expands. <laughs> Hi, my name is Erica Thompson. I'm from East Haven. I'm marching for Medicaid because as a single mom of three children, working two jobs, and neither one will provide health insurance. Before the divorce, I received my ex-husband's Cadillac insurance, and without Dr. Dinosaur, I'd never be able to meet my ch children's health care needs. I have a son with ADHD that requires daily medication and monthly doctor visits combined with therapy. My children's right to adequate health care is why I'm marching for Medicaid. Yeah. I'm in St. John's Ferry. I'm marching for Medicare because right coverage is mouth. always dropping. More and more things that used to cover are not covered now. I can go to the eye doctor, but they don't help cover eyeglasses. I paid 300 for these. Dental coverage is only $500 a year. Sometimes they'll give For school and for work, Medicaid is really important because if you have an accident outside of work or anyone has an accident outside of work, you, uh, you will have the medical support. Uh, you don't have to pay that much money when you go to see a doctor. This will help me and my fellow co-workers and my, uh, because instead of spending so much money, I will use that for things that I need. I wouldn't have to choose between my family and my health. Sería bueno que esta ley siga adelante para que todos los que tengamos el, para que todos tengamos el derecho a tener a tener cobertura médica. También sería algo bueno que se expendiera para cubrir a la a la comunidad de inmigrantes porque cualquiera puede tener un accidente dentro o fuera del trabajo. No hay compensación al trabajador y eso significa que nosotros tenemos que pagar todo de nuestro bolsillo. Esto es algo malo, porque si no trabajas y por muchos tiempo, esto es duro por, por la familia y la, la familia necesita de uno, porque la salud es un derecho humano. Move forward and continue to stay strong so that we all get the medical coverage that we need. It will also be great if Medicaid could expand to cover migrant farm workers because anyone is prone to having an accident. An accident at any point, inside of work or outside of the work. Uh, in many cases, if there's no workers come, many people don't have workers come, this means that we have to pay money out of our own pockets. This is bad because our family suffers because they depend on you. So I truly believe that health is a human right. Hello everyone, my name is Becca. I am a Vermont Workers Center member and a very proud teacher. Can I have all the teachers in the audience raise their hands right now? <laughs> Vermont's NEA Teacher Union is joining the struggle for health care for all. And I am part of a community of teachers who all have very similar stories. Each of us trying to be healthy for our students, families, and communities. But that is impossible. We are caught in a system that puts profit over health. When our system is based on profit, there will be injustice. Today, teachers are part of that dire situation in which we've heard other community members sharing their stories. We can't pay our high deductibles and bills are sent to collectors. Bills that are supposed to pay for our health care. This is not for the well-being of our communities. As teachers and support staff, we love the young people under our care. Any cuts to Medicaid, small or large, harms our students' learning, which directly impacts our teaching conditions. Right. Right. Governor Scott has engaged in a blame the teachers rhetoric. 
He is pitting teachers and support staff against their communities to try to justify making cuts to education. If the underlying root of the problem is a system of profit, then we must eliminate profit. Teachers, <laughs> teachers and support staff unions must fight for the public good, health care for all, as well as education, housing, and food, because these are the foundations to health. And those who say that there is not enough money to publicly fund our health care, I got something to say to you. How about we start taking some of that money out of our military budget? Because we know the military is also inflicting health crises around the world. All people deserve health care now. So when health care is under attack, what do we do? Stand up by back when health care is for psychiatric care. Those who do find them discover there is a lack of options for support. Public health care propositions like the expansion we are talking about today are the minimum we can do as a society to enable people to live with dignity. On the other hand, if the current federal government gets the rollbacks it's seeking, it will be enabling a tragedy. The pattern of involuntarily committing people who are living in extreme and impossible circumstances will accelerate. Barriers to health care do not make for a healthy society, and that's why I'm marching for Medicaid. Hello, Vermont. My name is Volney. I'm. Oh, yo. <laughs> yeah, my name is Volney, and I'm here to call for the protection and the expansion of Medicaid, not only as a Vermont Worker Center member, but as somebody that's gone through the Medicaid system and experienced the benefits and the shortcomings. Uh, I've had a long, lengthy battle with cancer in which I heavily relied on the Medicaid system. And in, once I was in it, I realized that it didn't cover most of the things that I would need. So I then had to move from state to state to pretty much get the care that I needed to live. And, and nobody should have to do that. And I barely was able to make it. And my story is not unique. And there are people all over that have to go through the same problems. And I feel like everybody in every state all over America shouldn't have to worry about their health care, and not only for them and themselves and their families, but also the people in their community. So I'm here to call for a protection and expansion of Medicaid, and that's why I'm marching. Can you hear me now? This is not a Verizon customer service, anything, so anyway. My name is Christine. I live here in Barrie. And I am with the Vermont Worker Center and proudly organized all this with a bunch of other people. Um, I am marching for Medicaid because mental health issues are a big part of universal health care right. in order to live a normal life we need this insurance so health care is a human right everybody Woo! say it health care is a human right health care is a human right health care is a human right I just want to uh, thank everyone who just shared. Is that everyone? Anyone not? Okay, cool. Um, that's really hard. People getting real vulnerable. Um, this is real stuff we're talking about. People are really suffering. We are really suffering. Uh, our, our family members, our neighbors, our coworkers are really suffering under this unjust system. And I think our, our friend Becca here said it best that Profit, that's what's up. That's why things are so bad, because there are so many people trying to make money off of our bodies. And that ain't right. So are we sick and tired of hearing stories like this? 
Are we sick and tired of our friends and our family members and our neighbors being treated like dollar signs? Yeah. Or their gender? Yeah. Or we can go back to this one. Or, or we're going to continue struggling under this disgusting, unjust, immoral system where the poor get poorer and the rich ain't getting sicker. You better believe it's going to take beyond going. Get off it. Patience, not profit. Profit, get off it. Woo! Woo! Well, you better believe it's going to take getting beyond human right to health care, too. Because we're going to fight for our right to housing, to food, to clean air and water and dignified work. We're going to fight for the rights of people who are different than we are because at the end of the day what unites us all is that we live in the wealthiest nation in the history of the world. Yet there are so many of us struggling just to get by while the rich keep getting richer off our backs. I read in the paper the other day that there's a downtown primary care facility, primary care office, I believe right over here, that's closing. Has anybody heard this? Has anybody go to this doctor because we would like to talk with you we would like to find out my understanding is a hundred and fifty patients fifteen hundred patients go to this office to this primary care facility and at least a hundred and fifty or two hundred walk there so if it closes and it's the only downtown office what is going on folks rural house hospitals are closing these primary care places are closing in smaller towns and then I hear there's some kind of expansion happening in Burlington. This is not acceptable. All right, I'll try this one more time. I'm having bad luck with these microphones today. Um, all right, we're going to wrap it up. We know folks have been in the sun for a long time. Uh, we have some delicious food coming up over there from the People's Kitchen. Let's give it up for the People's Kitchen. <laughs> but there's, you know, the important thing is today, this is not the end, right? It's not the beginning. People have been doing, engaged in this fight for a very long time, but it's also not the end. Uh, this is the second ever March for Medicaid in the state. We had one last year up in the Northeast Kingdom. Who was there? Anyone? Yeah. Yeah, and we're going to keep this process going. This isn't an about. This is not about a single event. This is about a process of organizing a robust, gigantic movement of poor and working class Vermonters who are going to fight for healthcare justice. We're going to fight for migrant justice. We're going to fight for disability rights. We're going to fight for gender justice and reproductive justice. And we're not going to stop until we win it all, right? A lot of you are probably veterans of this movement. You've been doing this for a long time. I'm sure there's some folks, maybe this is the first time you've ever come out to a march like this. Um, but you got to stay involved and really join. When we talk about building a movement, we're talking about building strong organizations of people. Um, you know, we want everyone here to sign up to join the Vermont Workers Center. Uh, you can do that somewhere over there. Go visit Julie over there. Yeah, yeah. She wants to sign you up. Um, for folks who live in Washington County or around Barrie, we're going to be doing on June 12th uh, a new member orientation. June 13th. June 13th, uh, a new member orientation. If folks want to sign up, get involved. Even if you've been to Worker Center things before, but you aren't a full member yet, come on out, um, get involved. We're, we've got an amazing community meal program we run here in town. Um, we're gonna keep doing stuff like this, building our, our local chapter here. We've got chapters all over the state. Uh, just sign up and, and, and we'll be in touch. Um, also in July, there's gonna be a rate hike hearings at the Green Mountain Care Board, Blue Cross Blue Shield. Year after year, they're trying to increase their rates, charge people who uh, aren't on Medicaid, um, who are buying plans on the healthcare exchange, charge them more money. We've gone, I think, two or three years in a row now and successfully lowered the rate increase they're asking for. Yeah. We, want, we don't want any rate increase, but it's a long, hard fight, so keep an eye out for that. Sign up with the Worker Center, and, and you'll get more info. We'll turn out to that. 
Um, and also, you know, if you're a member of a union, of a faith group, some other community organization, we need you to join. We need your, your people to join us in this movement for healthcare justice. All right? So what do we say? Forward together, not one step back! 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 Ableton on Air major sponsorship was given by Green Mountain Support Services, empowering neighbors with disabilities to be home in the community. Also sponsorship was given by Washington County Mental Health Services, where hope and support come together, and Champlain Community Services of Vermont.